Hello, UAE Grow Your Finances community. Where we discuss how to make your money work for you as opposed to the other way around and how to best grow your finances within the UAE. Here, we like to flip challenges around and create ideas, opportunities and possibilities so that we can all succeed together because there are enough seats for everyone at this table. Disclaimer, we are not financial advisors and we do not offer any type of professional advice. We only hold discussions around the topic from personal experience and invite guests to provide information and context around ventures we are personally involved in or interested in. So Russ, are you ready to make finance fun? Absolutely. In three, two, one. Fun. Fun. Today we have an exciting jam-packed episode planned for you with some juicy conversations on how you can improve your financial life starting today, starting now. Hi Russ, how are you feeling? Wow, I'm excited. It's been a while. We've been speaking about this for a very, very long time, but finally the time has come. Yeah. Welcome everyone. We have been speaking to you all on the group and we know what it is that you enjoy discussions around and we've been dying to get into these discussions with you and we just felt that the next logical step was to do that here on this platform so we can discuss in depth all the things that you're curious about, all of the things that we've learned from you actually. Yeah, we're all about learning, learning together, learning by ourselves, finance and investing is so complex it's so versatile and it's not just one shoe that fits all at the end of the day people need to understand that and um, if people want to follow their way and only their way they can do that that's no problem at all we are here to include everyone but still if you want to hear about different investment plans different investment strategies not only our own we will be having people in guest appearances so we can hear from other people so you guys don't have to hear only our voices yeah and having said that we are also very different so on that note we'll start with introducing ourselves especially for those who aren't a part of the group and are new podcast listeners who are just listening to the podcast you don't have to be a part of the group to follow our podcast so we're just going to tell you a little bit about what we're about as individuals and then also about the group just very briefly how it got started and everything because it was also featured on Dubai Eye so our story is there on how the group was conceptualized and we do talk about it also on our group a lot how it was conceptualized because it's quite a unique and inspiring story. So we're in a really bad situation it was during COVID we were stuck out of our home country no income coming in we literally had so much time on our hands and I started investing this stock that stock And I came to Kim one day and I said, I found the golden investment. It was a Chinese stock. It was basically like Chinese Tesla. And I said, Kim, I know we do not have an income coming in. However, let's put our money where our mouth is in this investment. Trust me, we will make money from this. And by his passion, when he was saying that to me, I could tell that this was like something that was big because I had never seen you give me that energy, that excitement, that passion in that capacity before. So I knew that he meant business with this. And I also trusted him, even though he wasn't big into investments yet. I really trusted him because he had been dabbling in it a little bit. So he had tried with like financial advisors and things like that, even though he had lost money and only made a tiny bit of money. By his dabbling and the way he spoke about it and the way he naturally just was interested and passionate about finances and business and things like that. And he was trying things out and he was actually showing me like a lot of creativity, a lot of really good thinking in that area. And I'm not that type of person. I could just tell that through this time where he had spent so much time researching and everything and he had now come to me with like this passionate excitement, I could just tell that this was a thing. So I said yes. And I was like, okay, let's do this. I was nervous, but excited at the same time. I joined every single group there was out there about the stock and everyone was going crazy. And it was actually small groups. And I knew that this thing was going to blow up. And we bought in at about $2 a share. 
and we kept on buying in as it went up. But long story short, this stock hit around $75 a share in the space of, I think, one year. And during that experience, I got everyone on board. I mean, I helped a lot of people in that moment yeah. make a lot of money. And it was a really, really good time. Yeah. He had a group advising some of my friends and some of my friends were locals here in the UAE. So they were putting like big money into it and it was exploding. And they were just like, wow, this is amazing. Thank you so much. And that's when I realized that Ross has an eye for it. He has a feel for it. He has an intuition for it. He has an eye for it. And I said to him, if you're helping this group of people, you could do that on a larger scale and we could give back because our situation served us. In the end, we actually made more money than we would have made if we were back in the UAE during COVID working. We made more money stuck out of the UAE. Yeah, we were one of the lucky ones. So many people lost their jobs. So many people lost everything. However, during that time, during that sticky situation, I do believe most of the time when it's a sticky situation and someone is very scared about what is going to happen, there's always something good around the corner. You have to take those opportunities. Yeah. And also it serves as a motivation to really take action and do the research and get something done. And so we wanted to bring that mentality and that lesson that we had learned to the UAE. Absolutely. Because we realized that people are here wanting to grow a life for themselves. The expats, at least, are here because they are wanting to grow a life for themselves. They're wanting better for themselves. They've left their home country. They've left their families. They've left their friends. They've taken the chance. They've come over here and they are motivated to do something for their families, for themselves, to make a better life. And I think that that's also the, the aim of the country is to give people a better life. Their own people, of course, which they do an absolutely brilliant job of. And then also the expats who are here. It's a country of inspiration, opportunity and success. So we decided that we were going to create this group, UAE, Grow Your Finances. Of course, it started off really small. We started doing it as more of a hobby and have a little fun with it. But today it is made up of over 6,300 people and it keeps on growing daily and people are loving it because this group is free. There's no financial advisory fees to learn about this and to learn about that. And we learn from each other. I've learned more in this group than I have given on this group. Yeah. And this is what it's all about. Yeah. Giving and receiving. Absolutely. So another thing that sets the group apart is that we don't allow any spam and we have a strict policy of it's not about members taking from each other. It's about people contributing together to help lift each other up. And we have people from all levels of investment, business, finance. You know, we have people from all levels and we'll go into that when we introduce ourselves because Ross and I are very different when it comes to that <laughs> yeah. too. So the intention of the group is lifting each other up, supporting each other, helping each other helping to educate one another and open the discussions of what is working for you and what isn't working for you here in the UAE with growing your finances and I would say I was beginner 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 level I don't even have the brain for it my brain doesn't function that way but I've learned so much to a point where I'm actually able to contribute now on the group just by almost like parroting what Ross has repeated on the group over and over again I've learned from that so I I think on that note, let's introduce ourselves. So who is Ross and who am I and who are we to be doing this sort of thing? We're just regular people. Just by the way, we're just regular people. But I think that some people are just more financially inclined than others. And that's what sets us apart. So we give two different perspectives. Correct. So my name is Ross Horwitz. I'm from South Africa. I am a food and beverage professional. I have studied hotel management. I've been in the hospitality industry for a good 14 years. I'm all about hospitality and food and beverage when it comes to my profession. But hobbies and everything else is finance. I love finance. I eat, 
breathe sleep finance every single day i love talking about it i can talk about finance for hours on end for days on end as my wife knows <laughs> she is the one that said just start this group because i didn't stop speaking about finance so we live in the uae we've been here for around eight years now and we can say that we have started to get into the finance industry which is fantastic i mean i'm really really enjoying it it has become from a hobby to something more than just a hobby and and we just wanted to share our experience. We wanted to share our philosophy about finance, how we invest our money. You know, we invested our money from when we had tiny salaries, when we started off in the UAE to now. It doesn't matter how much you earn at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it matters on how much you save. Because what we do is we save our money before we start spending our money. And this is the type of relationship that we would like to show everyone that we have with our money. You know, this is how we respect our finance coming in. And this is what it's all about. So we started this group and actually back in South Africa, when we invested in this stock that took everything to the next level, this is when I found the confidence, the financial confidence that took us on to more things and a lot of people in our group on a daily basis is saying I don't know how to do this I don't know where to start I only earn this amount of money my expenses are too much to be able to save so many excuses for reasons why people do not invest but there's so many more reasons to invest we're going to teach you guys how we do it from our side we're going to show you how we do it from outside and hopefully we can get some input from you guys on how you do it from your side so we can all grow our finances together so i would say i'm a bit impulsive when it comes to taking opportunities which is something that has actually helped us but it's also a bit of a downfall sometimes you never know i like to get involved i like to learn more things i like to join more groups i like to discuss with more people i'm not someone that is okay black and white this is what they say. This is how we should invest. This is how I'm going to invest. No, I want to look deep. I want to find different ways to invest. I want investing to be fun. A lot of people say the most boring investment is the best investment to do. I don't agree with that. I, I completely disagree with that. Maybe it's the best investment for them because they don't want any fun when it comes to investing. But with me, I love investing. We've recently just invested in a private equity, a company that has is going from strength to strength. It's so exciting to be on that journey with this company. It was a big company when we invested in, but it keeps on getting bigger. And that's an exciting investment on a monthly basis, being in the meetings with them, them telling us about their finances and knowing that you own a piece of that company. It's super exciting. I'm someone that can sit in front of the TV and watch Shark Tank for a period of five to 10 hours straight and still really, really enjoy watching the next episode. So that is me. That is how I invest. I invest in a fun, exciting and very passive way because I don't want my investing to take over my life. I have a full-time job as most of us do here and we do not have extra time on the side. Also, I have a beautiful 10 month baby boy and he also takes a lot of my time out of the day. But at the end of the day, all of these exciting and happy moments add to my financial confidence. And that's something that people do not talk about enough. Financial confidence is a thing that gets you to put your money where your mouth is. Also, if I may say, you are a creative at heart, so you're very imaginative and you like to create and you also like to take risks. So you enjoy the excitement of some risky investments and that's very well balanced also with your logical side where you enjoy that safe, solid foundation. I've learned that all from you. <laughs> Those are your words. Safe, solid foundation. But then you also like to take risks, calculate risks, obviously, that could bring you huge success you know so you have that steady foundation and then you also have that risky side it's very well balanced with you which I think serves you very well in a financial aspect absolutely I mean I will have to say to those people before you switch off the podcast and never come back again the ones that invest in only ETFs and invest in the really really safe investments I have 
most of my money in safe investments. I would say that I have my solid safe foundation, which we call it, which is I would say around 60% of all my investment money is in investments that are extremely solid and extremely safe. So don't get me wrong. I'm not someone that just is going to just throw my money into the crypto world and hope that it goes times 200. That's not me. As Kim said, I take calculated risks. I take exciting risks because, you know, at the end of the day, you have to have fun as well. Because what's doing something and not having fun while you're doing it? Because I spend a large amount of my life, I would say, talking about investing, communicating to other people about investing, learning from different businesses, speaking to different people that have had startups. So I spend a large amount of my life talking about business, talking about finance, talking about investing. So how can I do that and not have fun? So yeah, that's a little bit about me. I mean, there's a lot more about me that you'll probably learn along the way. So I'm I'm really excited to have you guys with us on this journey. It's a really, really exciting journey. We've been wanting to do this for a very long time. Ever since I've been told that I have a radio voice, we have thought about we need to jump into this. We need to talk to people about what we do on a daily basis when it comes to finance, when it comes to investing, and when it comes to having a little bit of fun. Yeah, because we like to have fun with investments and finance. We do, we do. And actually, I must say, Kim said it earlier, she was an absolute beginner. Honestly speaking, so was I. But when I talk about an absolute beginner, I'm talking about someone that did not even want to look at a bank account on a daily basis <laughs> or in a weekly basis or on a yearly basis. Her financial literacy, I would say, was on the, on the smallest percent of anything else that she is good at, you know. Yeah. But since we started this group and since we've been speaking about it so much, sometimes I read the posts that she's made on the group thinking, oh my god that's actually better than what i would say <laughs> so you know you. you know at the end of the day we all are an average joe you know we're all a person yeah we all have the planet. potential i mean exactly and i'm talking about from someone that has not opened a financial book in their life to someone that only reads financial books every single day of their life at the end of the day it's about how much return can we get from our really hard earned money and how can we do it in a way that is actually fun, exciting, and keeps us doing it? Because consistency is so important. Yeah. So if you are a boring investor, you might forget about investing. Because at the end of the day, when I'm having fun investing, I want to do it every day. I want to. It has more. to feel right and comfortable for you so that it's sustainable, so that it becomes a part of your lifestyle. It has to become a part of your lifestyle, something that you enjoy doing. You know? And we will have an episode on that money mindset and how to change the way you look at money because that's important. If you have bad connotations with money and bad beliefs around money, bad belief systems, it'll make you feel bad whenever you have to deal with money and it's not going to be fun. So that is going to be an episode. So I just wanted to add to your intro, if I may, <laughs> again, <laughs> that you are the hardest worker. I know you have an incredible work ethic. So you're super hardworking. So that's one thing that I wanted people to know about Ross, just because he talks about passive investments a lot, but at the same time, he's working super, super, super hard. So that is why passive investments are important to you. So you can work hard at your day job or whatever it is that you are venturing into. You know? Correct, because time is money. Yeah. And that's a big thing that I've learned in the last few years. He paid his own way through his education, his tertiary education. So you paid for your college yourself. I decided to rather work than ask my parents to pay me through college. Even though I did have the opportunity to get my dad to sponsor me through college, I decided to do it myself because, I don't know, I just felt like I really wanted to. I've got three brothers and they all went through college as well. And I decided to give my dad a little bit of a financial break. Mm -hmm. And I said, let me do this on my own. And actually, it turned out to pay itself a lot better for me yeah. because I was working while studying. So it gave me a bit of a heads up when we talk about other college people, I would say. Yeah. And that leads perfectly into my introduction because I couldn't be more different. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have a financial mind. I do not have a mind for business. I don't consider myself good 
with all things business related and I'm not motivated by money. Money does not motivate me personally. So if I'm doing a job, the outcome of the project I'm creating, for example, would be the motivation or seeing somebody transform, somebody that I've helped transform or making an impact on somebody's life. That's what motivates me. Money doesn't motivate me. I'm just not that type of person. It's just not the way I'm wired. I'm also a creative at heart. So I have a bachelor's degree in motion picture media so I'm a creative at heart and I love to see projects come to life so I love to imagine something in my head create something in my head and see it come to fruition that is something that really I love and I enjoy I also love to read I love language I love reading and writing and any form of self-expression so I have a history in performing arts and I really enjoyed that very very much and so when it comes to finance my area that I'm actually interested in, there is an area that I am interested in, and that is property, the property market. I do feel that I have an intuition for the property market and I am very passionate about it. I really enjoy it. And I think it's got to do with actually seeing the properties, you know, the location where it's located, the amenities. There's something to see. I will have to add on this one. Kim, I would say, is probably, she probably has more knowledge than most of the property agents in the country at <laughs> yeah. the moment. I mean, yeah, I'm a little bit obsessive when it comes to property. She has researched every single project out there, every single company out there. She can tell you left, right about every single company in terms every of their area. quality, in terms of their quantity, in terms of what they are building at the moment. Which I is love to see communities, the communities that they're developing, the amenities they're putting there. I love to see the way that it's designed. I love all of that. And funnily enough, she loves also the investment side of property. So I she do. can tell you on how we can buy this and sell it for this amount. So when it comes to property, I trust her a lot more when it comes to the finances of a property. So she would say, we need to buy this. Sometimes she doesn't know that we cannot afford it. But <laughs> I mean, she has told me on a few projects that we need to buy into now that has I think doubled exploded back, doubled no, value we're talking about quadrupled yeah like literally Dubai Hills in I think it was 2018 I was begging you to just buy anything in Dubai Hills at that time I think Maple the townhouses Maple they were going for like 1.6 million today that value has like tripled maybe doubled okay i also tend to sometimes exaggerate a little bit <laughs> maybe doubled but some of them have tripled the properties there but so. we we are actually looking for our family home currently obviously the obsessiveness has gotten even more heightened which is great because it means that we don't have to go to every single property agent to find out what's out there i just have to ask him so <laughs> it's great we will have episodes on property in the future too yeah with some property advisors and property professionals in with us yeah so they can show us the ropes and another thing about me is that i'm super super passionate about helping people that is, I think, one of my number one passions and to a point where it has, I guess you can say, been a weakness in the past because, you know, sometimes you get taken advantage of and I'm, I'm learning boundaries and all of that. But helping people and spreading compassion is my passion. And I'm also really passionate about health and wellness on a larger scale. And I believe that that involves mental well-being, financial well-being. I think that living a healthy, happy life has to do with all aspects of life and maximizing on all of those aspects. So I'm very passionate about that area, overall well-being. And that also involves the area of psychology. So I'm very well researched actually on that area and it directly applies to finances. They intertwine. Like basically everything in life, it all intertwines, it's all interlinked and everything is nuanced. There's no black and white. There's always a lot of gray area and I feel like everything kind of comes together so I add that perspective also to the group and I will be adding that perspective to the podcast mindset and psychology absolutely I must say on this side without Kim's brain the group would not be there the YouTube would not be there and definitely this podcast would not be there because we needed that push 
And I think Kim is the person that's really pushed us on this road to really sharing with everyone and on a sense of trying to help other people. You know, for me, I would have kept everything for myself. I know it sounds selfish, but I'm so focused on my job and the day to day life that I tend to forget about that side. So like I said, I like to see my ideas come to life. <laughs> exactly. So that's, I think, the thing that Kim definitely brings to the table as well as the whole psychology behind it, because for me, I'm someone that is, I would say, a little bit of a cheapskate. Then that's something that is a, is a drawback for me. Because if you are trying to save every dirham you have to, and not have that cup of coffee that you want and not have that soft drink that you want or something like that, it might lead to something with a more negative mindset that doesn't attract money. Doesn't. But that's where we balance each other out because I believe in enjoying life to the fullest and that had me spending every single last fill of my money and my salary back when I was working and you are the one who taught me how to save properly and how to balance it out really. Correct. Kim is like a full-on attractor when it comes to money. So she would live her daily life and not focus on making a paycheck on a daily basis. However, things do tend to gravitate towards you because of your mindset. Whereas I'm the opposite. I need to work on a daily da daily basis really, really hard to get my salary at the end of the month. And then I come along and Kim has found a job and Kim has gotten this and Kim has gotten that. <laughs> so I be believe in magic and I believe that it's not actually magic. There's a secret formula. It's when you believe in yourself and you believe in your ideas and you begin to explore those avenues and actually take action. Anything is possible. Anything is possible because I look at people who are successful and I'm putting inverted commas there in terms of finances because that's not necessarily the definition of success. But you see people who are wealthy and you, you think, oh, I want to be like that one day. I want to be comfortable, you know, stress free. I don't want to have to think about how much money I'm spending on starters, mains, desserts when I go out to any given restaurant in Dubai, which can get very expensive <laughs> here in Dubai. <laughs> and you think to yourself, what did they do that I cannot do right now? Okay. But what makes them so much more special with the ability to do it? Do you know what I mean? Correct. Like yes. you have the ability to learn. You have the ability to take any opportunity there is, you know, obviously hard work is involved always because you have to put in that effort. But if it's a dream and something that you have good feelings towards and, and you really want it and you really are willing and open and willing to do the self work and be honest with yourself and take criticism and work on yourself, you are able to take the steps to get there. So. I believe in magic in that way, that anything is possible, magical thinking, anything is possible for me. And some people might look at that person whose life they want and think, I'll never have that, or they're so lucky, or even something bad about that person, like, oh, they just had a lucky opportunity or Correct. something, you know, no, maybe, but then you can also. Exactly. You could also have that exactly. opportunity. And I'm trying to learn that from Kim because I'm very stubborn headed, as I'm sure you can agree with me. But we both are. <laughs> but I but I must say that I'm starting to learn it from her because I can see it in real life. I can see what attracts to Kim from just her mental state, you know. And I would like to bring that into my mental state with the financial backing behind it and really take it by the horns, you know. Yeah. Enjoy life. To the fullest yeah so i firmly believe in work smart not hard we have limited energy to put into something so i believe in picking and choosing wisely and calculate where is the good area to put your energy and, and put it there rather than going to your day job putting all your energy there a job that you don't really necessarily love a job that's not gonna get you to where you want to be yeah and i've always been a person that is you work hard and you work hard i'm the type of person that my whole work in life i've been working 12 to 15 hours a day and just to let you know no overtime given there because i grew up in the hotel industry and i'm finally realizing that that's not my self-worth. I'm worth so much more than that. We all deserve abundance. There's Correct. a seat for everybody at this table and there's enough money to go around in this world for absolutely everybody to live abundantly. So when I was younger, I Googled, how do people get really, really rich? You want to know what Google answered me? <laughs> what? They said, you don't get rich by working. 
a nine to five job. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so, so it basically kills most of the people's dreams, you know. And I took Google's word for, you know, the word back then. It was like the golden word. So I was I like, when, oh, okay. I think when we went on our first date, I think you spent your last cent on the dress that you bought, right? Oh, yeah, when we met, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> my outfit and my jewelry, it was Valentine's Day that we met. So we were at an event and my whole outfit was my very last that I spent on. Yeah, so. Because <laughs> you knew I was coming along. <laughs> yeah. That's a story for another day. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get started on the discussion topic of this episode, which is how all is relative in terms of what you perceive as a luxury lifestyle or what you perceive as the lifestyle that you want for yourself that you are working towards with your finances and your savings. And then we'll get into the main topic of the episode, which is what is holding people back from getting started. I mean, I really relate to that because that's something that I was always very, very fearful of getting started with investing and all of that. And you were the one actually who convinced me to put my entire salary into a property when I was first earning here in this country in my very first year working here. And it was a small salary. I didn't think it was possible, but we made it possible. And that's another thing that we were able to do to make it like an impossible situation possible. Correct, yes. So the main discussion, we will talk about what is holding people back. Maybe you can relate to that and how to overcome that and get started and take the jump of starting to invest your money really wisely and how to figure out what it is that works for you. Okay, so we have a little bit of a unique situation. We grew up in South Africa and I was born in 1990. Ross was born in 1992. And I don't know if you're familiar with apartheid South Africa, where there was a lot of oppression in the country and discrimination and segregation. That ended in officially, I think, in 1994. So we were kind of raised on the aftermath of that, which was as Caucasian South Africans, we had privileges. Yeah. Privileges were in place. I don't know if we were aware of that back then, because obviously we were like no, babies. we weren't, definitely not. But growing up, we became very much aware of that, because there's a very obvious divide in the country. And the aftermath of apartheid South Africa is very evident in South Africa, where white South Africans had opportunities that people of color did not have back in South Africa. And that includes our families who were raised in South Africa. So we are aware that we are very blessed, but also it provided a unique situation for us where we were able to live a very good lifestyle in a family, in families, I would say, that would consider themselves middle class, I would Correct. say, yeah. right? Absolutely. Although in South Africa at the time, we probably would have been in the top percents because of how much poverty there was there. Yeah. But our families my family always used to complain about how they broke in inverted commas you know they always say oh we have no money we're broke we're broke meanwhile we were going to private schools we were living in very large homes yeah i was up on the mountain overlooking the ocean we had a home office we had four large bedrooms that was eventually expanded we had a bar area like a room upstairs with a balcony we had a huge like living area with a huge separate kitchen we had you know everything you could yeah. want a pool a, you know a backyard a big garden a pool went to private schools had all of the best of everything i did every single activity after school that i wanted to do i did violin i did piano i did guitar i did dancing diving you know everything <laughs> all the sports swimming took part in all the competitions we went on family holidays yada 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 everything and that that lifestyle here in the UAE to achieve the same lifestyle that we were brought up in you always want better for your kids you always want to raise your kids in a, something better than what you had right you want to give them more but to achieve that same lifestyle here in the UAE you have to have multi 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 millions which is just mind-blowing to me because for us back then it was the norm yeah you speak about a villa and you speak about a townhouse like it's so unachievable you know but in South Africa, you only really have houses, you call it. Yeah. You have apartments, but most of the people are living in like houses. 
small well the people medium. and i just want to correct that we were associated with correct yeah. because the poverty was kind of like tucked away yeah when we were growing up it was like in different areas tucked away we couldn't see it so we were living like in a little bubble but we didn't consider ourselves wealthy no and neither did any of our friends we wouldn't be considered wealthy by anyone's means in south africa but yeah. if someone came from the uae let's say that has never visited South Africa before and saw the houses we lived in and stuff like that, they would think we were wealthy. Yeah, yeah, they would. Which is, it's, it's so mind-blowing. Yeah, and I remember thinking when I was a little girl and I used to fantasize, so I used to watch like movies about princesses or whatever, you know, Disney movies, and I used to fantasize about, ooh, what would that mean for me? I would imagine like this absolutely huge, like massive, massive castle, you know? And I'm like, okay, that's what it means to be rich. That's what I used to think. Yeah. But now when we're in the UAE, it's really a mind warp. It is, it is. Because what's considered luxury and rich for us was just the norm. So now what do we do? That's our dilemma. We're not complaining. We are so grateful for our lifestyle here and everything that we have. And we have something that's priceless and that's safety. Absolutely safety. priceless, which we don't have back home. And we obviously have the government and the company that I work for looking after Security. us so well. We would never get this in South Africa. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's a catch-22, you know, it's all relative. At the end of the day, you can be striving for something your whole life. But if you just move to another country, you can have it instantly. Yeah. And we have group members and listeners from all backgrounds and with all different expectations for themselves. So it's very personal to you. And obviously, there's no judgment there. There's no shame there. We realize that our situation is a very strange and unique one yeah. and something that people actually don't discuss. Because, Correct. you know, when we came to this country, that's when we had the realization. We we're like, wait, where are the houses? Exactly. Villas. <laughs> houses. Villas, yeah. <laughs> Um, Mansions. And we were back in Abu Dhabi and we would go to Albertine. I'm sorry for all the Arabic listeners, how I, how I pronounce Arabic words. I apologize in advance. You can have a good laugh at me. But when we used to go to that area, we were like, oh, here the houses are. This is where it is. And actually, those, those were like, the mansions. Yeah. Those <laughs> some homes in Albertine, they're really big mansions, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. But some of them are just normal houses. Like, yeah. Like that we grew up in South Africa. Yeah. So, yeah, it's mind-blowing. Definitely, it is. Yeah. So, it really is all relative, like, what your goals are. And for us, to get back to that lifestyle, our goal would need to be to have tens of millions here in the yeah. UAE of dirhams, you know, not rands. We're not talking about South African rands. We're talking about dirhams. We need <laughs> tens of millions to get back to that lifestyle. Granted, I think things were easier back in the day also, you know. It's tougher in this economy, in this fast-paced modern life, of course. And our expectations need to be kind of, like, leveled out. We are very happy we're comfortable we're happy yeah. but we also want familiarity we want the know? garden for our little boy you know we, that we have you know? we'd like to have a garden yes a pool that we used to have we probably won't have a pool here but a garden is very necessary you know? and we really value space correct which as everyone on this podcast who is from the uae can realize space <laughs> is of the essence yeah space is <laughs> you space walk into money you walk into villas that cost millions of dirham and you get little closets you know yeah tiny, unfortunately tiny it's like quite claustrophobic sometimes but you also get beautiful communities so i saw an article online recently i think it was today or yesterday from college times and it was about the Mazuz winner he won 20 million and he was saying in the article because I actually opened it and read it surprise surprise I know most people don't do that but I actually opened the article I read it and he was saying how he wants to learn to invest this money now so I commented and I said he should join your ego your finances because that's like exactly what we do there and you will not believe how many laughing reactions I got on that comment people thought that I was joking they thought I was making a joke because he now has 20 million they're like haha why would he want to grow his finances? And I was thinking, that's not that much here in the UAE. He can spend it very easily. I mean, yes, it's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot of money. But he could spend that very easily if he's not financially savvy. And also, he couldn't retire on that amount here in the UAE. You know, if he wants to live a certain lifestyle, like what we're discussing, for example, if that's what he was used to. Yeah. 
he wouldn't be able to retire on that. So he would need to know how to invest or where to put his money. Yeah, he would need some sort of investment that pays him on a monthly basis. So he doesn't have to work again, but he would still have to put that money in the right place to be able to live on it. Yeah. Because 20 million nowadays in the UAE would buy you a very nice five to six bedroom house and that's it. <laughs> yeah, then you're done. And in some areas, it'll buy you a three bedroom house. Yeah. So we have to really be careful at the end of the day, but also we have to not limit ourselves. That's something that definitely Kim will teach us in this podcast because she speaks it to me every single day. To enjoy money. To enjoy money and not be so stingy with it. And I'm trying to learn as much as I can in that area as well. It's a fine balance. It's definitely a difficult and fine balance because things are very expensive these days. So to enjoy your life, to enjoy your daily life, to enjoy yourself and to live abundantly is not easy correct so we will be discussing all of that in correct. this podcast and how to how to take those little steps i think it's an interesting discussion and i also think you know speaking on this topic you need to really stay in your lane if you're keeping up with this person and that person you're never going to be happy financially what do you want to achieve in what are your targets what are your goals and you focus on that yeah. don't focus on other people's goals because you will never be happy in life it's so otherwise. personal it's so personal and so relative as we spoke about yeah. you know so yeah. So another discussion topic for today is professional job titles and what they really mean. Wow, this is a big one. This is a big one and this is something that I, I feel very strongly on because for me, being a food and beverage professional, working my first few years of my life in South Africa, South Africa, I would say a, let's say a restaurant manager or a restaurant supervisor is seen as a very small position, like at the bottom of the ranks, almost hospitality is seen as like the bottom of the ranks. But when I came to the UAE, it's a different story. The UAE is very focused on hospitality. It's a big part of the financial sector in the country. There's a hotel on every single street. So job titles are also relative in that manner, but also job titles at the end of the day do not define you. And this is something that we will talk heavily on because someone coming to me and saying, I'm a financial advisor, I'm not going to be like, oh my God, can you manage my finances? I'm going to say, oh my God, please do not manage my finances because <laughs> of what experiences I've had in my life with financial advisors. But on the same regard, there are many financial advisors out there that have the title and that have studied and do want a win-win situation for both themselves and their clients. And these are the type of people you need to find if you want to use a financial advisor to manage your money. And also people can put any title to their name. Correct. If they so choose. We're going to be podcasters after our first episode, <laughs> you know. That's a job title of ours. Yeah, well, it's not really a job, but it's... It's, it's, a, a, it's a title. <laughs> it's an experience. Correct, yeah. correct. <laughs> So, yes, I mean, at the end of the day, you could be a lawyer, you could be a doctor, you could be someone that is in society seen as a very, very important title for the world. Yeah. However, at the end of the day, it's not about your title you have. It's about what you do with that title. And that is something very important. And you also, you should not trust someone based on their title. You need to get some personal experiences from other people that they have dealt with. And this is not only financial. You can yeah. walk into a doctor's room in this country, in any country, and them saying, okay, I need to do a surgery on you. Are you just going to trust? No. Well, that same doctor who has a doctor's title could have a side passion for investing in finance, etc., etc., and could actually have some really valuable advice to give on what to invest in, what's worked for them. Correct. You know, so... That's also something to remember is that especially when it comes to financial advice, speaking to people who have walked the walk, people who have tried it out, people who have actually succeeded, who have made things work for them, that's 
where it's at and people who don't have something to gain for themselves it's their job and they're getting commission and they have a procedure that they just do for every person boom 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 this is where you should invest this is what works boom 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 you need somebody who really has the time to give you that personal touch correct and who's not just visiting people all day telling them their procedure doing their... these cold calls that we get every single day in this country and at the end of the day taking a big cut from you for themselves because they're recommending things that they know works for them in terms of what they make money from almost like overpriced funds that they know are overpriced but they're doing it so they can get a bigger cut yeah and so what we do is we are not financial advisors but we recommend what works for us. Well, we don't even recommend it. We just talk about what has worked for us personally. Correct. And we're not saying that that is the way to do it at all. And nothing set in stone. Yeah. For me, in the last, I'll say, five to six years, I've changed my investment strategy probably 10 times. And some people listening to this podcast right now would say that's the complete wrong way to invest. But that's the way I'm investing and that's the way that works for me. But the world is also changing very rapidly Correct. and crypto came into reality and some people were like, I'm going to invest in Bitcoin and some people were like, that's absolutely crazy. But the people who actually went forward and were open minded to it actually made money. And some people might say, oh, well, that was just a fluke. Look at crypto now. But yeah. those people made money and that is the point that is the whole goal because they, they, they saw an opportunity and that's what you have to be open to correct so when you have something set in stone and you're like it's like this this is the way that works and this is what we stick to and this is the way that's always worked and it is the way that will always work Yes, you probably will make money in the long term. It's a safe, solid way to go. And we recommend that. Correct. But we also recommend staying open to opportunities in an innovative world, an ever-changing innovative world. You have to adapt. Correct. And you have to be willing to take the leap if you're talking big money. If you're talking, I want that lifestyle where I don't have to worry. I have my space. I have my good quality home that's not giving me a headache with maintenance issues all the time. <laughs> and I'm living in a very wonderful community for my family. We don't have to worry. We can take a trip back to our home country. We can, you know, to live that lifestyle, if that's your goal, you would have to be open to taking those risks and taking the leap. An example of that is what we spoke about earlier, which is the NEO stock. I could have said, you know, this is $2. It's very cheap stock. They're only starting out. I could have said, ah, Tesla has taken over the whole market share. There's no way that this company is going to survive with them there. But no, I didn't say that. I saw potential. And I took it. And it set us up nicely, even with not earning the money when we were stuck outside the country. We made more money. Yeah. So take those opportunities by the horn, but do your due diligence, which is so important. You need to do your research. And that's the perfect little wrap up for this discussion topic, because you were doing a job that wasn't actually your job title because you were stuck out of the country on unpaid leave. You were not able to do your actual job. So you're doing it like a side interest without a title and that made you more money than your actual job with a title. So sometimes the titleless, if that's the word, people are the ones to listen to. Correct. So be open. And we're not saying don't listen to people with titles. Of course, just take it all in and then use your own intuition, use your own gut and make it work for you. That's the thing. You are the master of your own destiny. You are the master of your own plan, your own financial plan. You know what your goal is. You know what feels comfortable for you and you're able to feel things in your body, you know, based on your own life experience and your own personality and the way that you're wired. And you're able to take all that information in, devise a little plan for yourself of all the things that you know you like and you could deal with on your day to day and the things that excite you and you hold that power in your hands and you take that Absolutely. and you run with it and open yourself up to all information, all possibilities and be vigilant and be smart. 
I do have to mention, I do have a financial advisor. I don't call the firm that I'm investing with a financial advisor. I call them a financial firm because it's such, such a negative connotation behind it for me that I don't even want to call them financial advisors. But they are people that I can trust. They are people that they want a win-win situation for them and their clients. They are making me win left, right and center. So I trust them and I will only use them because I'm scared of going to any other financial advisor that might want to take advantage of me at the end of the day. Full disclosure, this is where our money at the moment, the section of our investments, where our money is sitting that we believe is going to be our biggest success. Correct. Because I actually invested through the private equity that I spoke about earlier through this company. Yeah. So isn't that a little bit ironic that it's like a financial advisor? <laughs> that I've invested most of our financial money with. See, at the end of the day, the world changes, people change companies come out of nowhere that surprise you and you know you need to wake up every morning and say what am I going to learn today it's also nuanced exactly. when you look at this company you're looking at the details it's actually not that risky it's got a very 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 big success Correct. rate it's about getting in at the right time on the right project also you know so you've really got to use your experience and use your discretion but the only way to gain that experience is to get started and you will have failures there will be areas where you will lose money there will be areas where you will fail but don't be dis discouraged by that because it will give you the lesson and the growing experience to eventually become your own little expert. I've lost money. I've lost a lot of money in my life. You have to take opportunities. Sometimes opportunities don't work out, but you can't just get yourself down and worry about the one that didn't work out for the rest of your life. No, focus on the ones that are doing well. Focus yeah. on the ones that are doing well and find more that do well. And that's exactly what we're trying to discover. That's how life works. You try things out. You're not an expert immediately. You learn and you grow. And it's no different when it comes to finance. So for people who are scared of getting started, so this is our main topic for today. People who are scared of getting started with investing their money, putting their money into a platform, putting their money into an investment, whatever it may be. What are the things that hold them back? Because we've seen a lot of people on the group say, oh, I don't want to put my money there because this, this, this. Or I don't trust that platform because insert it, it leads, comment. It leads on to the biggest reason why people do not invest and that is fear. And along with fear comes financial confidence. I'm talking from personal experience. I had no financial confidence until I made that big investment with Neo mm -hmm. that paid off. That gave me the confidence to take my investment to the next level. And people need that push. Yeah. And they don't need the white noise on the internet telling you that you cannot do it. Don't do it yourself. Let me do it for you. Or just follow the same financial investing way that we've all followed for millions of years. No one wants to do that. Who wants to do that? I mean, <laughs> well, if you follow the same thing that our parents did back in the day, and our kids follow what we did, nothing ever moves forward. How do we ever progress in any industry? Yeah, you need innovation, you need evolution. Everybody evolves, the world evolves, and finances is no different. I sometimes, I think, rattle the feathers of a few people because they follow in the same investment strategy as some famous investor who has already died 20 years ago. And they can do that if they want, because some people are too stubborn headed to move forward and to look into other investments. And those are the people that are going to be left behind. Yeah. And this is what I'm trying to get by. There are, I would say, 80 to 85% of the world that have absolutely no financial literacy that will take anything that they see on the internet as God's words. I think that's something important for people who are fearful to take note of is to not hang on to anybody's words. Correct. And that includes ours. So if you have one person who's telling you this is the way, don't hang on to those words. You need to explore different avenues. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're part of our group, make sure you're also reading other books. Make sure you're also looking at other people's perspectives on the group, other group members, because we have a lot of group members who actually have a lot of experience. And there are some people in the back 
background on our group who are big potatoes also. So (laughs) a lot of people are just watching. They're just watching, but they actually are big potatoes also in the industry, which is, I think that's so cool. It's quite exciting, definitely. Yeah, so we have people who are able to actually provide some great insight on the group. We have some members who are very active and very passionate about their methods also, which we greatly appreciate. But what I want to say is don't take one word only. Don't take only ours. Don't take only theirs. Take it all in. Yeah, don't come back and say I I lost money in private equities because Ross was speaking about it. (laughs) Private equities is probably one of the riskiest investments you can ever do. And also there's a process that you have to go through in order to evaluate. And Correct. that takes experience also. So we'll get into that in another. Hundred percent. But I think speaking from my own point of view, what I would be scared of and what I was scared of before, I guess, meeting you, getting involved in finances with you. <laughs> oh, for those who don't know, we're married, by the way. So, <laughs> so yeah, we're a married couple. <laughs> So that's how we're involved with each other. <laughs> we we have a baby we, boy who is yeah. the cutest thing in the world. We failed to mention that we... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so what I was scared of before was I thought that putting my money online, no matter what the platform is, putting my money online, this was like back in the day, you know, maybe putting it into a site or an app a platform that's on an app or something that it could easily just get stolen or just disappear. Okay, so I was scared of that. I don't know if that's a unique it, that's mentality. That's completely rational okay. and it happens on a daily basis in this world. Okay, so that's the first thing. So yeah. do you want to talk on that and then I'll... Absolutely. I mean, I mean, it's so important to hear this because there are so many hackers out there today that can easily hack into probably any system in the yeah. world and steal your money, especially when it comes to crypto. I had it happen to me a few times. And oh, that, yeah. that's why I do not invest in crypto anymore because of my experience with crypto. However, on to don't take that as the golden word. It correct. Could be very successful. Exactly, exactly. There are so many successful crypto investors. But anyway, on to this topic. There are so many people that lose money because of this. And yeah. you need to know which application, which platform, which investment to put your money online, shall we say. There are applications, platforms, investment opportunities where your money is not stalled online. So, for example, you have a platform that your money is stalled, yes, online, but they've got basically all these systems in place to make sure that no one can ever take your money. And you need to ask the question, you know, what, how do I know my money? is safe you ask the actual company how do i know my money is safe and you go with a platform that many people are using and what i want to say is what's great about the group is that a lot of the platforms that we personally use so we tell people about it because it's been successful for us we have direct, direct managers and yeah. managers staff members from that platform willing to help our group members they like waiting and willing they're and they're on the group and they're on the group. they're on the group So it's a direct contact to these platforms. But if you are putting your money into a financial platform online, you need to know that people use it. Don't just go and see, ah, this application looks so good. They told me I'm getting 10%, 20% returns and just put your money there. But the question is what people? If you don't know these people personally who are saying, oh, I've made so much money or like it's a really good place to put your money to just save and get a good return. Where do you find the people? If you don't know people personally to who you trust, where do you find people to, to tell you what to do? Well, you need to kind of find trusted communities mm-hmm. or make your own. Make a WhatsApp group with a few of your close friends, trusted people that you know will never screw you over. But search, search for the community, search for friends, search for that whole group. And let them invite people that they know correct who are interested in investing correct something cool you could do something together you know put all your money in the middle you know buy a property invest it out test things out test things out yeah but you need to make sure that all the boxes are ticked safety wise before you put your money anywhere yeah. Please. And there are a few platforms that are regulated by the Dubai government and that you need to check out. You need to make sure you have the certifications. You ask the actual people that gave the certifications about it. You research them. That's important. Correct. So you want to make sure that they have the certifications, that they are regulated by the government, that they are Correct. approved. And you need to know what that certification looks like and entails. Correct. So do you know what it looks like? And There's many. There's many financial institutions in the government 
government that gives certifications to financial firms from the UAE. You know? Okay. A firm in the US are not going to get a financial certificate from the UAE, obviously. However, I've invested in a few platforms in the UAE that started in the UAE that are regulated. certified and regulated by the UAE government. Because honestly speaking, it's the safest place in the world. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're regulated by the, the people the, the are guide, scared. The, people exactly. are scared. No one is going yeah. to be regulated by the Dubai government and have audits every single month and take chances. And that's a good thing. That's a great thing for people who value their safety, you know, in the country and value their financial safety. Correct. In the country. So something that comes to me when we were talking about that is that urgency could pose as a problem. Because now people are coming on the group and they're like, oh my gosh, I finally found somewhere where I could put my money and I'm going to start today and I'm going to do it and I can finally grow my money and this is so exciting. And then they want to put it somewhere quickly, quickly, quickly before they lose it. Like I need to put my money somewhere. I need to grow it now. I need to start today. And then they feel maybe a sense of urgency to find a platform that's going to work for them. Yeah, I mean, I would love to speak on this one. Okay, you know, but they, you, but uh, sorry, yeah, but sorry. what I wanted to say is that you have to take the steps. So you were saying to create maybe a group and invite friends and have people invite people and you do that research and you test out the market and everything. You need to take steps. So when you're feeling that sense of urgency, you can say it's desperation, which yeah. desperation is never good. The Definitely feeling not. of it can feel like excitement. It can feel like motivation can feel like inspiration but it's actually desperation don't get it confused so yeah Correct. you were gonna say so i i never listen to the desperation for example i have property agents they come to me they say i, I think ah oh, the property is really nice and they say you need to buy today otherwise tomorrow there will probably be no stock available this never works with me these sale pitches never work with me. People that are out there on the internet looking excited, the urgency is there, the emergency is there. These are the type of people that always get caught in the predicament of money being stolen from them. Yeah. Because people that want to prey on other people, they look for the urgency. Yes. They look for the emergency. They look for people that you just have to tell them, oh, I'll give you 20% returns. They will buy into this. And Please, guys, I understand, you know, you need to invest your money today. You need to start as soon as possible because the younger you start in the investment game, the better it is for when you retire. However, if you start today just because someone told you they will give you 20% return, which is absolute, um, no one can promise you this type of return, mm -hmm. then you are in the line to get your money stolen and that will set you back at least another five, 10 years. So yes, start today, but start today if you are ready to start. And also by start, we don't necessarily mean put your money in something. We mean start researching. Correct. Start getting involved. That's another tagline of yours is get involved. Get, get involved. Yeah. Get involved. Join groups. Join WhatsApp groups. Join Facebook groups. Join Instagram. Conversations. Groups, you know, and with like-minded people. If you don't think that, let's say, the stock market is something you want to invest in because it's too volatile, don't join a group that is all about the stock market. So you need to find your people. You need to find like-minded people that will put you on the right track, help you out. Get involved. Okay, so, so far, my fears were that platforms would steal my money. Well, now I'm going to check that it has a certification from the UAE government and I feel safe personally investing in the UAE because that's what I know and I trust the government here, okay? And I know that they're on it. We're a small country and they got it all under control. So <laughs> <laughs> I trust it. It's not like the US, which is a different situation. It's a huge country, et cetera, et cetera. So that was my first fear. Tick, it's not really a fear anymore because I kind of know what to do. I know not to be urgent. I Correct. know not to listen to that feeling of desperation and confuse it with a feeling of motivation. Like, Correct. okay, I'm finally ready to get started with my finances and let's do it. Let's put my money in. I know that the first step is actually to start researching 
Correct. And to start getting involved and to start talking to people, joining groups on Facebook, and maybe even connecting with friends and starting the discussion and making it something enjoyable for me, something that's like a hobby and, and realizing that I don't have to share the same path or mentality as other people in the space, you know, yep. that there's no set way, there's no wrong, there's no right. It's just me finding my way financially and what works for me. Absolutely. It's like style. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Whatever works for you, works for you, you know. Yeah. So I now can throw that away. My insecurities about, oh, I'll never understand finances. I'll never be good at it. I'll never find the right thing and, and be savvy and be smart with finances. I'm not really good at math. I'm not really good with numbers. It doesn't really matter, right? I can just do it the way that I want to do it. Correct. And another thing I would like to add about fear, once you have the confidence, once you're ready to invest, please don't put all your money into one basket you have to spread that wealth and if you are starting out with a new investment you've never tried it before a new platform put a little bit of money test it out for a few months before you put in the amount of money you want to invest in that platform and you can check is this a scam is this not a scam because you don't want to put all your money in and you lose it all so yeah. this is something that is very important that's why on the group i only talk about investments that i personally have invested in sometimes i invest in something just so i can check it out for a group member on the group yes literally i've seen you do that <laughs> <laughs> so another fear of mine would be, and I've seen this from other group members on the group too, so I know that it's not just my fear, and that is how do I take my money out? Can I take my money out of my investments if there's an emergency or something? Especially when I had a smaller salary. I was scared that I would need that money that I'm now putting into the platform. You know, I have just a little bit left every month and I'm putting it into an investment and what if I need that money? I would be scared also of the technical aspect of it. Maybe I'm not technically savvy enough to know how to take it out or to take it out without losing money or paying a fee or something or interest or all of that stuff. Like, I don't know how that works and I don't want to know and I don't <laughs> want to get involved. So this, so. Is, this is a pretty easy answer. So you need to have your emergency fund. An emergency fund can be depend on how much you want to keep in the bank account. But for me, myself, or for us, I have around four months of expenses in the bank account. That means I have four months. If something happens, like I lose my job or something like that, I have four months to find a new job and to get back on track. Okay, just want to stop you there quickly. When you say four months of expenses, is this the whole process, how you worked out how much your four months worth of expenses are? Or do you just estimate? And what I do is I take my rental. I take all my big expenses. I add them together. I put, for example, spend in money a few thousand or something like that, depending on how much you spend. And I work it out roughly. roughly on okay. on let's say an excel sheet and i average it out to what i normally spend every single month and okay. then i take four months of that it's not four months of your salary it's four months of your expenses Yes. Okay, because you only need expenses to live when you don't have a job, right? You're not going to be saving when you don't have a job because there's no money coming in. Yeah. Yes, I, I get what you're saying. And, yes. and then what I do is I invest in platforms with my investment money because that's money I do not need now. Because any good platform, any good investment giving you good returns doesn't let you take the money out immediately. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. Let's take an example. I've got an investment in stake, which is the property investment platform. This is a property investment. Property is always a long term investment. For me, I need to wait to have a buyer to buy my property before I can cash out. Mm -hmm. And any long term investment would not allow you to take it out instantly. Yes, you can get your money out. You will lose money if you take it out and you've only invested it for six months, eight months, you know. And but, is that with any good investment platform, would you say? I mean, you have platforms that allow you to take your money out instantly. However, there's always fees charged if you don't, let's say, invest it for that period of time that you said you were going to invest it for. Or let's say you didn't make any money on it because it was in there for too short it 
does require you to pay fees to take it out most of the platforms you know you do have for example the stock market that you can sell your stocks when you want and you can cash out but you still have to find buyers to buy those stocks on the stock and market. if you're a fearful investor you're probably not going to start with the stock market correct for me i have my money in solid safe places that they need to stay in there for a very very long time yeah so basically the solution for that would be to prepare yourself so to say to yourself this money that i'm putting into this platform it's actually going to be a little bit less than what i would like to put in because then i'll leave some for maybe my emergency that i'm worried about so i'll put less in every month until i'm comfortable with it let's say my emergency fund four months is let's give a rough estimate twenty thousand dollars for four months i need twenty thousand dollars to survive So I will keep 20,000 dirham in my bank account and not touch it. Anything above, I can invest it. However, I still need to have a percentage I will use for spending money for expenses that I don't need, but I want. So I've worked this all out at the beginning of every month. I take the investment money that I put into my investments. As soon as I get paid, that goes straight into my investment portfolio and I forget about it because that's the best way to invest. Let's say you take 5,000 dirham every single month as an investment money. As soon as I get paid, that 5,000 goes immediately into my portfolio and I forget about it. And I just want to say something here. You have to kind of flip your mindset. Correct. Because your salary is not really your salary in your mind. This is what works for us. So say, and I'm just giving an example. This is not really our salary. I'm just giving an example that works well with my brain because I'm really not good with mathematics myself. So (laughs) So say your salary is 5K, Okay. okay? And your expenses... You, you're just getting by. So say your expenses are 4200 okay, a month, but you are wanting to grow your finances and, and there's no very big prospect of a promotion or anything in the near future because you're working for a very big company and there's a lot of people and a lot of competition and you're kind of just, you know, trying to make a life for yourself. So you know that you want to improve financially. You know that you want to grow your finances. you got to be prepared for it to be a pretty slow growth. You tell yourself that your salary is 4,500. Because at the end of the day, it could have been. They could have offered you that instead of 5K for the job. Same job. Exactly. So you tell yourself, actually, my salary is 4,500. And that extra 500, you invest. You use that to invest, even if it's 100, even if it's 200, that's okay. Start somewhere, even if it's 50, you start somewhere, right? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So your mentality has to be that your salary is less than what it really is. Correct. And you have to take that money out of a place where you can make use of, because don't tempt yourself. We go past Starbucks every day, Mm. McDonald's every day. It all looks so amazing. Those burgers, those coffees. It's all very tempting. Marketing today steals your mind. Oh, yeah. And you need to, as soon as you get paid, you take that money out that you want to invest. You put it in your portfolio. You forget about it. Because by taking that out and seeing your bank account on a smaller value, it will put a bit of fire on your butt. It will get you to start thinking, how do I make more money? Where do I make more money from? And this is the mentality you need to start thinking. I'm going to insert a little life hack here. If you like change the Instagram accounts that you follow or you change the media that you're consuming, you can eliminate a lot of that persuasion and conditioning on what you should be looking like, what your lifestyle should be looking like, what your family life should be looking like, what clothes you should be wearing, what makeup you should be wearing, how your hair should look. All of that costs money. The Starbucks in your hand, humans are designed to be conditioned. We are very easily brainwashed. Everybody is. If you're being bombarded with the same imagery all the time, you think that's how everybody's living and you think that that's how you should be living. So you can change accounts that you're following to more suit the lifestyle that you want to be leading in terms of spending less. So, for example, I follow accounts 
that are in line with my goals. So I follow accounts where people are living healthy lifestyles, but also minimalistic lifestyles, which you can actually romanticize that too, just as you could romanticize a glamorous lifestyle that Correct. you know people deem as glamorous. So I just wanted to put that little hack out there. People are consuming things that are literally designed to make them spend unnecessarily. And you can change that. You also have that power in your hands. It doesn't mean you have to leave Instagram. There are all sorts of accounts. There are educational accounts. You know, maybe we'll even start an account for this podcast on Instagram. Gary Vee is a great account to follow for inspiration. He's amazing. Really is. Yeah. And he lives a minimalistic lifestyle also. And you know what? There's a lot of happiness in that too. Like there really is. And genuine. And honestly speaking, if you want a better lifestyle, you need to work for it. Because if you take your investment money out every single month and you feel you need an extra thousand, you need an extra thousand five hundred, start a side business, start a side hustle, do something in your free time that you believe could turn into some extra money. Yeah. Okay. So accepting that it's not easy to take your money out of a platform or an investment is key because usually those are the most beneficial platforms and investments when you put your money there and it's there to stay for a while. Correct. And that's especially for beginners because we're not yet taking risks or anything like that. We, we're building our safe, solid foundation. That's especially for the people who are fearful of getting started. Correct. So when you get started, you're going to be building your safe, solid foundation. You're not yet taking the risks. You're not yet buying into this stock. We started by buying into the stock and it was successful, but that's not necessarily the way to go. No, because it, it could have gone another way. I mean, you had four months to do the research. You had all day, every day to just do the research. And there was a bit of luck there, guys. I'm not not going to lie. There was a bit of luck there. And we don't suggest you start off this way. We suggest you start off the safe way until you are comfortable enough. You know you have enough money in your safe, solid investment area to have a little bit of risk. But that's your choice. And I think that the luck is also intuition in a sense where if you've been researching it all day, every day for four months straight, you're going to develop a little bit of an intuition for what's good and what's not. So I think that because all of your focus and energy was there, that luck in inverted commas was actually also intuition because I could see when you told me about that stock that intuitively you knew that that was going to be a successful one. And that was just purely from speaking, breathing, eating, sleeping on that all day, every day. And you need to know when to exit because if I kept that stock, it went all the way to $75 a share and it came all the way back down to $4 a share now. Is it $4 a share now? Yes. So (laughs) my average was around $16, $17 a share at the time where we had our most money in there. And I started selling off at uh, $50, $45 a share. So, I mean, I didn't get the full. I think you sold some off at 60. Yeah, just a little bit. So... You need to know when to exit. You need to know when's the right time to get out. Yeah. When it comes to those risky investments. Okay. So my next fear would be, I guess, my own insecurity, my own voice in my own head saying, this is not for me. And this is, I think, the financial confidence. Financial confidence will beat that any day of the week. But also there's a voice saying investments, finance, business. This is for people who already have money. This is for people who already have enough money to get involved. And this is also what I thought. This is what you thought. Yeah. This is what we all think before we get involved. But like we said before, we need to get involved. You need to find a group of people. You need to find a community that gives you the confidence instead of destroys your confidence. Yeah, so you need to surround yourself with people who give you that push. So that's basically what happened with me is that you gave me the push. So back then, going back in time, before COVID hit, Russ was already a financial brain. That's why I trusted you during COVID when that stock came up. It's because I I knew that you already had a financially savvy brain. You're already wired that way. Because back in 2016, when we came to this country, we came at the beginning of 2016, I was the one earning the highest salary. Yeah. 
And when I say higher salary, I'm talking about starting out. Okay, yeah. so a salary that you would be able to just scrape by on in the UAE as a, combined as a couple, especially our Let, salary. Let's put it this way. It's around 25 to 30 percent of what I am earning today. Okay. But your salary at that time was much less than that. Correct. It was 50% of what you were earning. Oh, gosh. Okay. So <laughs> just to put it into perspective. Yeah. So Ross came to me and said, let's buy a property. <laughs> and I burst out laughing. I said, you've lost your mind. You are crazy. And it's only for the rich, right? Yeah. Buying property is yeah. only for the rich. I was like, it's impossible. With a salary, it's absolutely impossible. I mean, we're living in the UAE. We've come from South Africa. We're a little small fish. Like, there's no way we can invest in a property. And I want to add also, I didn't mention this in my introduction. I actually had a severe debilitating chronic illness back in the day where I was eventually bed bound. At this time that this discussion happened, I was working, but eventually I became confined to my bed for years and I had to really heal myself when no doctors could heal me. So that was a whole other thing and that's why health and wellness is a huge passion of mine. But the reason why I'm saying that is because eventually we had to make property payments when I was confined to the bed. We had to make that work. And already I was feeling a bit ill at this stage, but I was still working and everything. So I was, you can say burnt out. And I yeah. was like, I really don't want to take this on. But you said, don't worry, I'm going to sit you down and I'm going to show you how we can make this work, how we can do this. And so you sat me down and you showed me how it's possible. And we made calls to agents and we found out what the finances would look like, you know, the payments, etc. Mm -hmm. And we went to one real estate agency and they said, oh, you would never be able to afford a property, even 500K property with your salary. Yeah. The most you would be able to afford, I remember they told us, is 300K. And we we're like, well, we're not going to buy a property for 300K because we wanted it to be an investment, like a good investment. And we ended up making it work. We put basically all of our salary into... Yeah, yeah, we'll scrape by, you know, just so that we could have that better life in the future. And I think that this is so important to a lot of the listeners out there. And this was an off-plan property. So we had two years to pay around 40% of it. And then the rest of it, we could take on a mortgage. Those two years were very hard for us. But it gave us that boost, that opportunity now, once we have sold the property, to have a very nice, comfortable net it was a great Safety investment net. in the end. It was, it was. I mean, we rented it out for five years and we sold it for more than 50% of what we bought it for. So it was a safe, solid, really good investment. And now we have that really comfortable safety net and we learned so much from that experience. Yeah. Oh my word, that was a learning curve to another level. It really was. And I think it grew my passion for property in the Correct. UAE. Correct. Still to this day, I don't know how we did it with the salaries, but we broke it down. And when you think something is impossible break it down it's possible anything is yeah possible. and on the topic i wouldn't have had the confidence to even have gotten started with that so if you're surrounded by people who do have some confidence in that area and they can help you out maybe show you the way even just a little bit it can give you the confidence to get started and i'm not saying get started by buying a property <laughs> could even just be in a small way Correct. I don't think I had the confidence more than I had the impulsiveness <laughs> at that point of time. But like I said, I broke it down and I saw it was possible if we really, really scraped by. And I'm not telling people to scrape by it. It's not a great life to live, but I'm glad we did today. I'm glad we did. Yeah. We sacrificed a lot. We did. We are reaping the benefits now, but we're also sacrificing now for later. Correct. So... We're finding it more of a balance now, I would say, especially with a child in the 100%. mix. Because you can't scrape by with a child. It's not possible. You need to give the child everything it needs. Yeah. It's all learning curves. You can learn in every area of life. And that's what's so beautiful about life. Yeah. So what other fears have you seen on the... I would say I'm too young to invest. I'm 19 years old. I only have 5,000 dirham of free money. How do I invest that? On our group, we don't encourage ridicule or mocking. In fact, actually, we don't accept it because we want it to be a community where people lift each other up and like genuinely help each other and support each other. So we don't like it when people knock each other 
other's confidence. So we actually don't have tolerance for that. But I have seen some comments, and I'm presuming we deleted them, where people have mocked platforms that were recommended or investments that were recommended because of their own fears. Correct. By saying, oh, fees are too high. Oh, money is hard to take out of. Yeah. Oh, it's not safe. Oh, scam. You know, some people just throw around the word scam. <laughs> white, white noise you see all over the internet because people sit behind their computer and they say things that they would never say you, to your face. Yeah, but my point being, it reveals to us the fears that people have because they're projecting their own fears. Correct. So the fears that people have around investing. So are there any fears that pop into your brain that you want to address that you've seen on the group in their mockery? I would say people with little financial knowledge making a post and just getting destroyed by by someone that thinks that they have more knowledge. That little comment that person said can destroy someone's financial confidence. So you need to be very careful about who you are interacting with what group you are posting on. A lot of people on the group have been there for two years and they're making their first post, let's say these days, because they finally packed up the courage to say, this is my situation and I need help. We only are starting to get posts now with people saying, I have 5,000 in my bank account. I've saved it for the last year. People are starting to become more comfortable on the group. And that's when you start seeing people posting because you can learn so much from people that have little to no knowledge making a small post of their situation because then people come and they help out yeah and that brings me to another fear so a lot of people are fearful of investing because they think that because you're not getting huge returns it's not worth their time so this is actually a fear that i see a lot on the group they're expecting to get so much money out of their investments. They're expecting to get so much money so quickly. And then they're thinking, oh, it's not even worth it. Like you don't really get that much money out of it. So why should I invest? I may as well just have the money sitting somewhere. What do you have to say to that? All I have to say to that is having your money in the bank account right now, you are losing money because of inflation. Every year, things get more expensive. And every year, nothing changes in your bank account. However, if you're earning, let's say, 5 to 10% in a safe, solid investment, you are ahead of inflation. And if you are ahead of infl- inflation, that means at least your money is working for you instead of losing your money, losing your capital. So earning 5 to 10%, I would say 10% would be probably the most you can earn from a safe, solid investment. And there's probably still a bit of risk there. But let's say 6 to 7% is a good return on a safe solid investment and this is what you need to realize if you put in a thousand dirham into an investment and you get in let's say six percent a year you'll only be making 60 dirham a year okay if you break that down into months you're making five dirham a month so people see that and they run away they say no i don't need to invest it's a waste of time however if you put a thousand dirham in that investment and every single month after that you put a thousand dirham into that investment and you consistently do that for years after years you will realize at the end of the day that that was the best decision you ever made because it's all about consistency so putting a lump sum of money in an investment and then just going to sleep is not going to do justice you need to keep on topping it up topping it up topping it up and if you get in a nice return from that you leave the money in that and then it starts to compound and compounding that is where the money's at. When you make profits on your profits, that is when you're making money. So let's say that 60 dirham that you made from that 1,000 for the year, you leave it in, you put it back into the platform, you make in now 6% on 1,060 dirham. And compounding on that interest, compounding on that profit is where the money's at. And, uh-huh. and if you keep on putting money in month after month, that is when you will be reaping the benefits at the end of the day. But if you keep on putting a thousand dirham into your bank account every single month, you're going to be losing every month. And not only that, in addition to that, you're also gaining the experience, like we said. So you're gaining the experience of starting to become an investor, no matter how small it is, no matter if it's like 60 dirhams a year that you're making, you're doing the research, you're taking the steps, and eventually you'll have more platforms 
and you'll have more opportunities and you'll have more intuition and confidence and you'll be able to take additional steps and make more investments and then maybe even you'll find a stock that's really gonna do very well and you know how to evaluate it and you know how to assess and you feel confident you put your money in and then a little bit of luck mixed and it does take off you know for example so it's just about getting involved also so for the people saying that there's no point in putting their money in because it's not enough return there's definitely a purpose you have to see the bigger picture and understand that it's a nuanced topic you know the world of finance and investments is very nuanced there's no black and white like we said there's no specific way to do it and it's just about getting started really absolutely Get started as soon as possible because the earlier you get started, the better it is for you in the long run. So how do we get started? Okay, so how you get started is it depends on what type of investment you are looking for. Like we said, get involved and find something that interests you. Personally, on our front, when we talk about our safe, solid investment foundation, we are invested in two property platforms that are founded in the UAE where you can buy stakes of properties. One is called Stake, one is called Smart Crowd. And basically, these platforms are giving us a safe, solid around 6 to 7% a year on rental income that get paid monthly, which we can compound and put it back into the platform into other properties. It's a great platform, both of them. They both work really well and they both give you exactly the type of returns that they tell you that they're going to give you on the platform. But we actually put it all over the group. If you guys are interested, join the group. We have some referral links where you can get free money by signing up through those links. So our group members get benefits. We work directly with the platforms to provide our group members with benefits benefits correct if they sign up using our links so if it's something that interests you join the group you can sign up through the links another great thing about this platform it allows you to spread risks when you talk about property so when you talk about property you normally have to have a big chunk of money to invest into one property so you can start renting out whereas this you can buy stakes you can buy shares in different properties for example, I have shares in around 40 different properties around the UAE. I must say that with the type of money that I have invested in these platforms, that I have shares in 40 different properties, I cannot even buy a studio apartment with. So I buy small portions of each property, so I spread the risk. A quality studio apartment in a good area. Even. Correct, yeah. correct. And then when you go on to our next platform we use, we use Beehive, fantastic platform. Another one where we offer group members benefits. You can sign up using our link and put in our promo code in on the from the group this is basically a platform where you are helping out the small to medium-sized businesses which i love the idea behind it. it so people that have started out and their, their businesses are started to do really well they need a bit of capital injection to let's say buy extra vans for their delivery service or just expand their business in any other way they say listen i need two hundred thousand. i need three hundred thousand doham they put that on the platform and then people like myself, other investors, we say, I will give you a thousand, I will give you five thousand, I'll give you ten thousand. And in return, that company will say, before you invest, you obviously read it, uh, they will say they will give you around 12% return a year, which is fantastic. And I invest through that platform around a good portion of our safe solid investment foundation so i'm helping lots of little small to medium-sized businesses while making money for myself so it's a win-win situation you can to support local business exactly it's all a win-win situation i love working with platforms that give a win-win situation Yes, and that's what the philosophy of our group is too. So we highly recommend, that's Beehive. Correct, and those are the three platforms we use for our safe, solid investment foundation. And do you have a link for Beehive also on the group? I I have a step-by-step process with a promo code. You need to use the group promo code to be able to sign up. We have the steps on the group if anyone is interested. And these platforms, I would say, are, in my opinion, my personal opinion, are the safest and most solid way to make really good return on your investment. And that's how I would suggest people start. 
that's your safe, solid yeah. your recommendation. And, and that's a non-professional opinion. So Non-professional opinion, uh, personal experience. And we'll keep on mentioning that because we do not hold any liability to anyone that has lost any money on any platform we recommend. We recommend it from a personal point of view. Yeah, and this is what has worked for us. And continues. And, and continues, continues yeah. yeah. So that's how I would suggest to start. Any last words? Um, any last words I would say for our first podcast is tune in, enjoy the experience, grow with us, learn with us, leave all the comments you have, all the questions you have. We are ready to learn from you as well as hoping that you are ready to learn from us because that's the way you grow your money and not following, following, following but learning together and adjusting your investment strategy to benefit yourself and the world around you. And our aim with growing this community is to provide you guys with an easier way to get started and with benefits. And we do plan on growing and expanding on those benefits. So we're working hard behind the scenes to make sure that our community wins along with us because that's very important to us. That's part of the ethics that we hold dear to our hearts here at UAE Grow Your Finances is that our community truly wins because at the end of the day, that's what we built upon and that's what's going to sustain us. So we are working hard behind the scenes, like I said, to make sure that we're partnering with companies, that we're finding out which the best platforms are for you and for us and making sure that we provide our group members with special benefits so that being a part of this community truly is something that benefits you. And having said that, in our next episode, we have a very exciting guest from one of our favorite platforms here in the UAE. And they're going to be discussing everything there is to know about this platform and how you guys can benefit from this platform. You do not want to miss this. So we will see you next week in that episode because at the end of the day guys you know how the saying goes pay yourself first because you are, are worth it, it.